Welcome to the webinar Academic Career Question and Answers. I'm Angeles Moreno, President of Uprera, and this is an Uprera Autumn Session. Uprera Autumn Sessions are a set of seminars scheduled along the months of October and November. We will have interesting newest results from diverse research groups and also very practical uh, seminars as, one, as the one we have scheduled today. Uh, information is available in our website and if you are or become a new program member, you could access this content whenever through our websites and use them as teaching resources for your own classes and students. Today we have a seminar dedicated to early career academic, but given the high level of the three speakers, I will say that we will get privileged information even for senior scholars. I will take a correct note myself. Uh, let me introduce you Diana Ingenhoff, Executive Director of IPRERA and founder of this session. Uh, Dr. Ingenhoff is a full professor of organizational and strategic communication and vice dean of the Faculty of Economic and Social Science. Um, she is currently a research fellow at the Center of Public Diplomacy at Annenberg School, University of Southern California. She founded the first international public diplomacy interest group at the International Communication Association and is division chair at ICA board member. Since uh, 2014, she is president of the Swiss Association of Communication and Media Research and has published, published extensively and has pioneered studies in diverse areas, important areas of corporate communication. We have also with us today a Dr. Uh, Ansgar Serfas. Uh, Dr. Serfas is the um, is the uh, also a former president of Uprera. He is the current professor and chair of strategic communication at the Leipzig University in Germany and professor of uh, communication management. Uh, communication and Leadership at the Business School, uh, Norwegian Business School, the on of, in Oslo. Uh, he serves as editor of the International Journal of Strategic Communication, uh, um, a journal published by Rowlich in the US, and his academic background is both in business and communication, doctor rehabilitation, etc. And he worked in the corporate world for more than 10 years. Uh, what didn't stop him from being one of the more productive authors on communication management all over the world. 34 books, more than 300 articles and studies. Dr. Serfas is the leader of the wider worldwide study of communication management in the world and received numerous, numerous awards, as for instance, the Pathfinder Award by the Institute of public relations. Sabine Nguila is our third um, uh, speaker today and uh, is the current head of the Scientific Committee of Uprera and is also the professor of public relations research at the University of Vienna's Department of Communication and head of the SICOM Research Group. Before joining Vienna, Department, Vienna's Department of Communication, she held a, a position as professor at Johannes Gutenberg University of Mainz in Germany, where she established the master program in corporate communication and public relations. Prior to this appointment, Sabine Wheeler was a professor of communication management at the University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland and spent two years at a postdoctoral research in the United States at University of South California and Columbia University. Other previous positions of Dr. Wheeler conclude, include head of the Center of Corporate Communication at the University of St. Gallen's Institute for Media and Communication Management and project manager of the Public Relations Department of BASF. Dr. Inwillen has also researched and published widely on topic of corporate communication and stakeholder psychology. She has also consulted 
on this, to on this topic for various major corporations. It is a luxury, a real luxury to have these always busy professors online today and it is an interactive session so be ready to launch your questions uh, raising your hand or throw the chat in the Zoom uh, panel on the right. We have the first question from Evandro Oliveira uh, who is uh, based now in Portugal and uh, the question is about the importance of publication for the career, for the academic career. Uh, I let uh, Diana Inkenhoff to answer this first question and to manage the rest of questions and answers. Thank you very much for assisting this webinar. At least uh, um, publish articles um, because in the commission we always compare one with the other and um, it of course counts if we have participants if we have applicants with the habilitation versus those uh, who haven't um, and it really depends on uh, how the how the job post uh, is described what are the special uh, special details you need um, but all in all, from my point of view and my experience, I can say it's still important. Yeah. I don't know what the others say, mm -hmm. Sabina and Anka. What would yeah, you? should I continue? Okay, so um, yeah, thanks, Andrew, for your for your question. I I can agree with Diana. So especially when you're from the German-speaking world, where habilitation yeah. is is only a choice or a, a possibility, mm -hmm. then it can be an advantage um, over others who don't have it or to be compared yeah. with others who have it. But um, I mean, for the full professor positions, I mean, I, I was in the commissions for several full professor positions and where, where we had, of course, people from abroad, like not, not German speaking world. I mean, there's the, the publications count. So if you just, if you have um, a large enough number of publications and not the habilitation, that also works but um if it's very kind of compared to a german speaking other um like um uh, competitors um in that field it it does it does help and um maybe to address your other question regarding the postdoc regarding the united states to to spend some time there um it does help it, it doesn't only help for like being like, competitive with the others who may not have a stay abroad, um, but it of course, I mean, it, of course it widens your horizon, it widens your network. I mean, I can just speak for myself, um, having spent two years in the US. Um, so it, it, it helps and it, it, it's also, it's one, it's one checkbox. So um, it, if, if you have that on top, and you have the especially international connections even if you've only spent i don't know three months or so somewhere um, abroad and of course the us just has good universities as we know where you can uh, like make good connections it it does it does help um to show okay i'm i'm good i'm well connected um, internationally um, it doesn't have to be years abroad and um, it, it's not a must but um, it's just kind of a, a, a bonus, let's put it like that. Anska? Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, good to see you or hear you, Evandro, here. Um, we were speaking a bit from the German perspective, or I think also habitation in Italy or so, you have uh, this old tradition. I think the, as it was said before, it's all about the profile of the university. So for example, in Austria and Scandinavian countries, um, more and more we have like open rank uh, hirings also sometimes in Switzerland I've seen that and so it depends a bit um, about the kind of the position I think um, it's clear that you need as uh, a formal uh, PhD you need publications in the field and then it's it's again as this was said at one on the one hand um, question of of competition and you need uh, some years of publication and teaching experience it could be like an assistant professor position, it could be like a um, habilitation, but it's really a kind of question of experience. And on the other hand, it's about the profile, because obviously when we're talking about research universities, it's a bit different than if you look at 
at applied universities or even at some research universities like in our institute we also have like one or two professorships who have a, a stronger focus on teaching you see that in the profile and obviously also then the qualification will be weighted a bit different that's the same for the international experience um, international experience as i've been it told us is very important to have research networks um, but you know if if a university tries to to strengthen the outreach, runs dual degree programs, um, obviously um, networks, uh, teaching experience like in the Anglo-American culture might be more relevant than uh, in another university where somebody's really looking at an institute for somebody who's, who's then in a specific job responsible for uh, let's say collaborations across Europe. So it really depends very much from my experience also sitting in various uh, committees and heading them on the specific profile on the one hand and then on the competition for a position on the other hand, as it was mentioned before. We have a next question from Anastasia. Um, Anastasia, do you want to pose your question yourself? Yes, I may. Uh, thank you. Yes. So my question is from a practitioner perspective. So I'm working in communication for behavior and social change in different mm -hmm. international organizations. I do have a track of interventions, manuals, guidelines, but I think I don't have enough um, publications actually, you know, that would be qualified as peer review, etc. And what would be my first steps uh, to academia in this case? Because I'm really passionate about, you know, continuing uh, applying my practical skills to more in-depth research. So that would be my question, you know, what would be my first steps as practitioner? Thank you. Who we'll wants to start? Um, yeah, I can, I could start. Um, of course, I mean, for, for research universities, I think here now we have to um, make the differentiation again, as Ansgar did before, between the research and the more teaching or more um, applied universities. I mean, for the um, research universities, of course, publications are a must. So um, if you ask, like, how should I start, publish, 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 um, and that in the rigorous um, peer-reviewed journals. So, um, but of course, I mean, there's, there's universities that particularly look for um, people who have practical experience, come from practice, can teach, um, then, then there would be, of course, more focus on teaching. That is, um, I mean, Ansgar mentioned they, they have people at, at their university, which is also a research university, but they also have people who are focused more on, on teaching. And um, of course, there it would be a bonus and you may even not need as many like um, peer reviewed uh, publications and then the applied universities. I mean, I don't know whether, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much kind of a, probably more in the German speaking world, we have these um, universities of applied sciences um, and they very much look for people also who, um, who have the practical experience and often the ones who have the rigorous um, research, they don't really have the, um, the number of years in practice. So you would really have a bonus, but you still would need at least some, um, some peer reviewed um, publications. Uh, so I would definitely put a focus on that because you definitely have the, um, the practical experience and then just kind of check which universities would actually uh, fit, fit your profile to. I might add uh, your question was, if I understand it correctly, how can a practitioner join an academia? So not necessarily as a professor, it could also be as a lecturer, for example, or as a, as a maître d'assistant, we call it here in, in Switzerland, for special uh, topics like a rhetoric or practical courses. We also have that uh, possibility where we have constant positions also that are more practical oriented. It really depends on the position. If you're not aiming at a professorship, there are also positions available that are more practical oriented. And then it's also important that you bring in your practice um, but as Sabina said, it's always important to publish. Um, and I think it really depends on where you want to apply, whether it is a, 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 an applied university or classical research-oriented university. 
Uh, yes, I would fully agree and also add that's not, uh, it's also the same in the Netherlands, you have the Hocus schools, it's in mm -hmm. Scandinavia, exactly the same, even in the US. Uh, uh, in the US it's not really clear what is an applied university. Some of our partner universities are research universities, but in the same department they have, um, they don't call them lecturers, um, uh, but they call them also clinical professors, and these are mm -hmm. practitioners in the end. We even don't have a PhD, but really have a clear job profile, probably not tenure professors, who really do more apply courses. So it's really very different in, in very different academic cultures. I think it would be important to, to get a better understanding of the countries or the academic cultures and setups in those countries where you're either living or aiming at. It's also obviously, especially at applied courses, very much a language and cultural problem um, because um, probably really in a full research university where you only do research um, um, you can probably do it all in English but especially specifically in our uh, field um, it's also very important obviously if you're in teaching to yeah to have an understanding of the whatever PR corporate communications culture and that's also really related to language and um, so what I have experienced from our different partner universities, we, we have these different profiles everywhere. And it's really difficult if you, you're looking from the other side, from your own career perspective, to give a general answer. It's more that you have to look at your own profile at a, at a potential pathway because you probably cannot do everything based on where you are at the moment. And then probably uh, look um, how to get to these yeah, to these positions, which would be, let's say, um, in, in your in your horizon of, of targets. It must be one, probably two or three, but it's also quite clear that there might be some positions who, where it's really unrealistic that everybody, anybody coming either from practice or um, research um, can realistically go there in the next years. So it's really very wide and it's really important to probably get some understanding, understand some role models, for you and then try to, to go along these paths. Thank you. Do we have more questions? What are your specific questions concerning your career? I will do a question if you allow me to. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sabine, you commented about uh, when you want to make a career of research, of course, the, the main request is publishing and publishing and publishing, no? the, and, and publishing in top uh, in journals. Uh, so uh, that's not easy for an early career uh, um, uh, colleagues because uh, top journals are becoming more exigent with the kind of uh, uh, research to be published, the quantity and quality of data. And so uh, what could be your recommendation going to the, having the first, uh, what, what to do with the first word you have to publish? Go to not the top journal, but maybe other national journal, et cetera, or on the contrary, try to uh, focus uh, your research in the way to uh, apply from the beginning to the top journals? Mm. Yeah, good question. Um, I mean, I think of, with, with, the, with the research, it's always good to first actually target um, also conferences like UPREA or, or, or ICA and try to actually get a full paper in and get feedback and, um, and then with the feedback you got, you can then improve the paper and go to a maybe we are top journal. Maybe I, I think people should not sell them too short. So if you have good research, and of course consult with maybe more senior colleagues and ask um, how, like, where is what is realistic. But you should always, my, I, I think this is my suggestion, always aim a little bit higher 
and don't sell yourself too low. So aim a little bit higher. Maybe you will get good, good feedback. Maybe it's rejected. Maybe, maybe your paper is going to get rejected. And of course, that's frustrating. We all go through that regularly. But you get feedback. And then you can improve. And then you can submit it to another journal that is maybe not as highly ranked. But then you already got some feedback. If you go too low and it's like, it's, it's great research and it's like just a minor revision or so and it goes through easily. I don't know, you, you may have yeah, had, the, had the chance to, to publish better. But it, of course, I mean, it also depends on the time you have. So we have, of course, the, the doctoral students who have their cum, accumulative um, dissertation where they have to publish for papers. You don't have all the time in the world to actually go through I don't know, three different review processes to eventually publish. So it, it depends on timing. If you have the time, try to aim a bit higher. If you don't have the time and you just need to get that publication in, in for your papers you need for a dissertation, of course, um, I would suggest to, to aim lower and actually have a, have a, safe, have a safe publication. So it, it depends um, like on the timing. But if you have the time, I would... I would go higher and get good feedback, improve, and um, eventually maybe get a better, a, a, a higher, higher ranked journal in the end. Um, on the one hand, I would agree. On the other hand, I would like to add something because uh, I think it's 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 an old saying of what is let's say what is higher ranked, lower ranked, um, or looking more for the impact or whatever. I think that's one perspective which is important looking at. And also, let's say selection committees will look at that. But as a, on the other hand. Um, I think it's a question of profile. So let's say we in our field like PR, communication manager, have obviously um, a problem because if you look at communication science at a research university in general, um, and you look in a general ranking of the communication journals, um, some of the top journals um, will rarely publish um, articles in our field simply because they have a different focus. So mm -hmm. I have seen not only in our field, also in other fields, candidates in when I was in selection committees who had formerly um, good papers or many papers in really high ranked journals. But unfortunately, um, 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 the let's say the specific journals standing for a subject like in our field PR, they never published in them or the same for another field like journalism or so. And that's always a bit tricky for your own profile because then you're good in publishing papers, but it's not so clear whether you're really really rooted in the subject, so to say. So I think it's a kind of a question of having balance on the one hand, um, looking for the good journals in your own field, uh, probably also top journals in communication science or whatever you're aiming at um, in, in general, but not losing the focus of, of, of the community and the community uh, where you're aiming at, for example, PR internationally, it's quite clear. They are meeting at several conferences, they have several journals, so you should make sure that you also publish in these journals and people know you, because otherwise um, all the high impact journals um, and a number of these papers um, are also a bit tricky if you're not part of the game, so to say. So I think these are two issues, again, profit on the one hand and more formal things on the other hand. And again, as I've been said before, it's a question where you're aiming at. If it's about um, um, finishing your PhD because you want to continue your career in the practice or, or, or probably go to a um, applied university in the midterm, you probably don't have to bother so much about the um, top, top journals. It's more important to have a profile and publish in solid journals or get your PhD degree, but then also work in the practice and so on. But if you are aiming to go at, at a communication research institute in a broad sense, on the national level, probably it's more important to go into other fields and also to have a broader <coughs> reach, not only publishing in PR, but also yeah, researching about some other adjacent fields. So in the end, it's, it's really very specific and it has much to do with career planning. And it's very important to have some mentors or guides probably Obviously, the supervisors of dissertations, 
but probably also more people who have a look probably more from the outside who are probably not really focused on the subject on PR or whatever but who can help you a bit more to think about your career path and what is possible for you in a specific situation and how to go there that is what what I have learned myself both as a mentor and also from some of some of my advisees here it was always very helpful to have somebody else to have a second look so to say uh, um, um, about career paths which is something different than a specific uh, research topic maybe to add just quickly i think the same uh, applies to my my ideas but also um i think it's um uh, research is always a most of the time a teamwork so you it, you look for a team and you have a supervisor you have experienced people mixed with not so experienced people and um, usually you do not start to write a paper from the sketch by a scratch by all by yourself without any supervisor without any team leader and so on so uh, it also depends on the team you're in the, the supervisor and uh, I would recommend to start in a team where you are guided through the process, not starting all on your own, writing the first papers. And um, I think there you can learn a lot if you join a team or, for example, if you are in a project like the Swiss National Foundation project and you are working in this project and it's quite clear that you work with this team and you work in, uh, in, in this specific area and it's always uh, already clear in, in which journal you publish together. Um, so I think uh, the first experiences you should do together with your colleagues, with your supervisors, with your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more questions? Each of you joining, I think, might have one question in mind when signing up for this um, mm -hmm. for this panel. So we are really curious what you are thinking about and what you are questioning yourself. So just go ahead and uh, ask us. I mean, if nobody has a question right now, maybe I can just share, I don't know, an idea or <laughs> just some recommendation. Um, maybe just, I don't know, from my own career path and my experience. Um, I think it's also, it's very, I think for me, it was very important actually to be open where to work. I know some people are kind of bound to a country and they would like to stay in their home country. And um, it may be difficult because of family to move. Um, it's in our field, unfortunately, we don't have that many universities or positions. Usually in, in, the, in the city, there's only one. And if there's a professor there, I don't know, not so old yet, then the position doesn't really open up for the next 20 years so flexibility um, concerning where you want to work or where you want to live i think is very important so i don't know just like from my experience i i remember when i was at my first international conference um, which was in the us um, i saw that there was what they called back then a meat market i was like my god what that so they actually they were looking for young fresh phds applying for assistant professor positions and in the us they have quite a lot i mean many many more positions especially in that mid path career than often we have at, at least in the german speaking world but also in the uni european universities it's changing now but um i think if you have maybe open maybe also to be for a while i mean it doesn't have to be all like for all your life but maybe for the start maybe go even go to the us go to other countries and um just be open and and open i don't know your um your eyes for for positions that are advertised there so for me at least that that was that was a main motivator actually i thought wow they are looking for young PhDs and there may be a possibility to become a professor and um, I wouldn't mind working in the US so sure and and this this kind of triggered me to actually pursue an academic career because first when I started to get into that field I thought oh my god there's there's so little positions and to get there would be difficult to find this one position that may open up and but then a whole new world opened and um, yeah so I mean here I am it, it just was a kind of a kick and a motivator and um, just, I don't know, just kind of as an inspiration, 
if you, if you have if you are open and um, you you are open to live in other countries just the world is yours public relations is yeah it's 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 um, everywhere there's there's interesting positions everywhere so just be open Thank you, Sabrina. And I think um, one interesting aspect you mentioned when you said that at the conferences they have the job market. Um, here also it's important that you can bring your research to the point so that you can explain what you are doing in, in three, four sentences. That is sometimes always difficult for coming from the from European countries. Um, when you are in this situation that you have to explain what you're doing in a very quick time because they don't have an hour or so like, like, like this for you. But uh, just bring your research um, to the point what you're doing and, and try to focus and try to explain it quickly and be prepared in, if you are going to these kind of job markets because it's, it, it, I experienced the same, what Sabine said, it's sometimes quite rude because they're just asking you, okay, what, what, what is your main focus? And then uh, if they're not interested, they just vanish, uh, disappear and, uh, <laughs> and it's just bringing it to the point very quickly. And um, yeah, so that is the game. Maybe uh, Ansgar can tell us more, something about your experience. Yeah, just to that point, um, I think that's very important. Uh, the, um, um, the European job market, especially in, in some countries or in all of the countries, uh, because I, I mentioned that before, it's really in our field, um, let's say, really linked to language competence. It's very difficult to get a job. Um, in Europe, if you don't speak the language in our field, it might be different if you like in, in, in <laughs> if you're probably in medicine or natural science or so, because you're just in the lab and working on that. But in our field, it's always linked to teaching. It's very difficult to be hired if if you don't understand the language, don't have the cultural background. Probably there are four professors and they can hire one who has only an international background, but at least the rest has to be engaged in teaching. And so that uh, also means that a larger job market, like in the US, where it's about English or in Asia, I was just in two committees in our partner university in Hong Kong Baptist University, and they were explicitly looking for Europeans or, or some people outside of, of either really their own people with the Hong Kong Singapore background or the US background because they want to hire a bit broader. So there are these opportunities. But again, it's also linked a bit to your personal background um, and um, whether you're willing, able to move. Uh, and uh, again, what I said before, it's a different profile because in the international, especially in the US Asian, um, let's say, committees, um, like in our field, it's quite clear that uh, some of the probably most interesting topics which are presented in Uprera and where many PhD students work on here are not really in the mainstream of, let's say, the four or five paradigms which are currently yeah, let's say popular in, 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 in the US world or the Asian Australian world is also very much shaped by some theories and streams at the moment. So it's not only about, um, let's say, being up to the point, but it's also about really, really being linked to these discourses. So in the end, it's, it's again the same. It's a different profile. And I would fully agree if this is on your potential, um, let's say, it's a potential picture for you to uh, probably go for your PhD and then spend some time as an assistant professor at a US university. Then it's also important, either in your PhD or, or in some other publications, uh, to be linked to these discourses because the selection committees, people hiring you in the US, it's also about deans who are very important there. They will, they will also check um, whether you are, let's say, linked to their community. And on the other hand, uh, Sabine, um, um, coming back from the US is also quite interesting because um, the systems and the expectations for, let's say, especially for professors are very different across, uh, across Europe, but also in the US and between Europe. Um, um, so, like if you have a system in Italy or also in Germany um, where you really expect uh, for professors to to acquire a lot of money, run large teams and so on, which has a lot to do also with, with organizational commitments, administrative commitments. It's quite different from Scandinavia, also from US, 
where all this admin work and, and organizing courses and so on is done by other people, and you're mainly focused on research. And I've, I've been sitting in committees in different European countries, and I remember there were some committees who had high-ranked researchers who were not hired because it was not quite clear whether they would be able to run this admin staff or being linked to the culture because they were responsible for some specific courses like in our field which are more applied courses so in the end the profiles are so different and then um, that's more most important to get these this vision and yeah. then check that whether this would fit with your personal interest like sabina said and then look for one or two different paths which could lead you there and always look for a second alternative, obviously. Um, probably at what time of your career would it be necessary to switch the side to take alternative B or so on. But again, that's really very personal thing. So it's really start discussing with your peers, start discussing with your role models, with somebody, alumni who had who've done that before and I have a, a bit um, further on your career path and start discussing with your mentors. So who else have a question? Um, hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, hi, I'm, hi. <laughs> uh, I'm from uh, Turkey. Uh, I've been uh, teaching uh, for almost six years now, but when you were talking about academic cultures, different academic cultures, I uh, feel like in uh, private universities in uh, Turkey, uh, especially, the academic culture is more and more uh, built on like the practical paperwork and like student-centered, student-oriented. So we are uh, like newly turning towards uh, the idea of research universities. So I, I always uh, feel like, okay, in, in research, I feel I'm really uh, coming from uh, the backwards. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not uh, so much qualified in the research process, but uh, your insights on like how to like maybe attend conferences and et cetera was uh, really important for me. But I also want to ask uh, something else. I see us as a very close community. So I, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, what about the collaborations and like how to uh, maybe pursue some collaborations and how the collaboration uh, idea is working, especially my question would be on these collaborative researches or like how to maybe pursue those opportunities. So maybe, maybe just to start, one great idea how to get into collaborations would be for the Euphrera, the different groups we have. Um, there are different research groups um, you might find on the website and uh, here colleagues from the field working in these research groups, um, networks are working on several research questions. That is one idea to get into such a group or at the big conferences like ICA, they have uh, divisions, PR division or com division, and they also have uh, networks, meetings, uh, and so on. So that would also be a possibility to connect to other colleagues. Is that what you are addressing? Yes, mainly I was, uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to get this idea. Yeah, yeah thank you. As, as, as I said, for example, Euprera um, actually has several networks and uh, research networks and uh, you are free to join. They are on the web page, um, contact the, the network leader. They, there are some projects ongoing with respect to COVID communication research, with respect to communication management research, public diplomacy, um, lobbying, all kinds of uh, different topics. And uh, the easiest way is to jump into such a research net network and join the group and uh, try to, uh, to try to get in touch with them, for example, either at Oprera, um, uh, at the networks or the projects, for example. That's what they are for. <laughs> Any other ideas, Sabine Ansgar? Yeah, I mean, an idea, of course, I mean, that, that, I mean, what, what you said, definitely. And um, I mean, if you see that your research, what you're doing connects with somebody else's, um, 
and I mean, that's what I did in the past. I mean, I, I went actually one time, I was still a postdoc. I, I went, I just went to a conference to actually connect with this one professor who I wanted to do research with. So um, I basically went, I went to her talk and um, she was doing research in what I was very much interested in and also did um, already did some postdoctoral research. And I just asked her um, whether, um, well, actually by that time I still had some money to do a, um, to actually do a stay at, at that university and to visit. So, um, but yeah, that, that, we, that, that really turned into a, um, a good, a good collaboration. So also just be, yeah, kind of, um, yeah, just, just um, brave enough to, usually it's good at, at conferences because there you can actually talk with people in person. I mean, sending emails is always, I mean, you, you don't really know, I mean, if you don't know that person, but if you really say, okay, I'm, I'm doing, you, I heard your talk and I'm doing research in this and this area and maybe this connects, maybe we can, I don't know, I have an idea, maybe we could um, do something in this and this, whatever. If, um, topic or I already have um, data and maybe you want to join to publish it if you need somebody to maybe also help you to get a publication um, polished or so just kind of needs you need some help maybe pull somebody in that that could also work if you already have data and not starting something from scratch um, yeah so also I mean outside of those already established networks, find people who are like close to what you're interested in. Do we have more questions? Maybe you're interested in the selection process, how this works, or what are specific criteria to apply. Uh, well, there's so much to talk about. That's a question in the chat by Daniel Wolf Gruber. Ah. Mick doesn't work, okay. Um, so Daniel Wolf Gruber says that he thinks it's important to create a brand, meaning that you should become an expert in a certain field. So my question is, what is the maximum number of research topic on sh I should focus without becoming a scientific non-entity? <laughs> Difficult question. Um, how many research topics? It, it depends on what you call research topics, right? Um, PR is more like a field within PR, there are several research topics you can focus on um, and uh, it really depends on, uh, on, 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 on the field, on how they co even connect, for example. It could be, for example, if you focus on CSR, corporate responsibility, and from this field try to develop a second field like corporate diplomacy, which is quite similar but has some new aspects. Um, or sustainability also has some new aspects, other directions, and so on. So then there are then this is uh, in the same neighbor field, but it's linked with each other. Um, I always recommend to have two to three different fields when you apply as a postdoc. So uh, for postdoc positions like assistant professorship for positions, because when we look at the when we when we think of the research committee selection criteria one of um, what I experienced, one of my criteria we had in the committees or was always if the candidate has two plus uh, research topics. So at the minimum two, better three or four research topics that you are not too much um, uh, narrow in one field. But again, that depends on where you apply and how the position is described. Um, usually the position um, where I was in the committees has two two different um, uh, areas. So um, it could be that, that you uh, apply for a job where you are specific, qualified in one area, but you can teach also in another area. That 
is because in Europe usually we have very small faculties. That means um, we do not have usually at one university we do not have two or three professors of PR at one university, but one professor of PR and this professor has to cover different fields, um, theory, uh, different uh, research topics um, and different related topics. So when we, uh, when we look for professors in this field, it's very important that these professors are also a bit broad. When you apply in the US, for example, where you have different uh, faculties, uh, including four or five PR professors, then you are very specific. You can focus on, on, on one topic like uh, Tim Coombs does it with uh, crisis communication. He's an expert when expert in crisis communication maybe again also CSR, but very much focus on, on crisis communication. And uh, this is the case because in the US, you have more uh, PR professors at one faculty, at one university that usually we do not have in Europe. So it really depends on where, you, where you're applying. Anyone uh, so, want to add? Yeah, I want to agree and would add something. I think it's it's a very good question. Uh, on the one hand, I told about that before, it's depending a bit on the level. So if it's about getting your PhD and then looking for a postdoc position, the first thing is you need your PhD. We talked about that, about um, either writing different papers or one paper, and obviously this is quite naturally your core brand then, because in your first five years, you will probably mainly publish about this because this is your core work then and obviously you can think about what is the topic i'm researching on is it really new is it more like you know everybody's talking about crisis since years so would you be just another crisis guy or would it even be good to go in the crisis field because it's a large field so i think in this first career path the choice of your a dissertation topic is very important because it's quite naturally part of your brand. And then, um, as, as I mentioned before, it's always good to have like a, a second field, but you also have to stay realistic within the beyond your PhD topic. Um, it's not so realistic to really dive deep, but that links back to international collaboration. So probably you only have uh, you start a small collaboration, do one paper, being a, being a collaborator in a larger project for your country, which gives you at least some footprint in a second topic. And then I think to add on that, it's very important to think of teaching here because it's uh, it's quite clear that within your first five years or even a, a, as a postdoc, you cannot do six fields or so in research on a certain level. But probably it's possible that you cover a second field or third field uh, in teaching. So if you have the chance to, to do some teaching, to guide some student projects in that field, that at least gives you a kind of a basic experience, a knowledge of the literature, of people in the field. And this gives everybody who wants to hire you a quite a bit of a confidence that even if you're not the research brand in that subfield, um, you are, let's say, close enough uh, to that field that you would be able to teach the field and probably also develop this field further in research in the future. So that's more about the first years and the postdoc position. Obviously, if you're looking um, in the postdoc or assistant professor field to so go further on to associate or full professor or whatever it's called, then it's really important to develop uh, a second or third field uh, also clearly yeah, supported by research, by grants and by teaching. But I think, again, it depends a bit on your career um, yeah, situation and uh, not losing the link to the overall field like PR, but within the field of PR, it should also be clear that you're standing for something and the first phase, it's normally um, around your dissertation topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically I can agree. It's, um, yeah, and, and as Diana said, um, it's, it really depends. In, 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 the, in Europe, um, we have to be much broader. Um, also at the professors, because we are usually just one professor of PR in, in the US, you have these very narrow people also when I, I remember I was um, uh, I had to evaluate some um, young career awards for ICA. Wow, there were these Americans. I mean, they were just 
focused on one top on one area, just one topic. But I mean, they had publications just incredible because but they were so focused, so narrow. And um, the European young scholars, it was difficult to compete because they just couldn't get that um, c quality of, of, of publications out because they were a bit too broad. So but I think it, yeah, it depends which which market you're targeting. Um, I, I still think it's 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 good to have also a bit of a breadth and, and a broader um, perspective. I think these very narrow, I don't know, usually American um, scholars, yeah, it's, they can be a very a specialist in this one area and have top publications, but they don't know very much about what's left or right. So it's kind of a philosophy question too. Maybe, maybe to add one thought, you could also think about um, branding yourself with respect to methods that you mm -hmm. um, research in the field, um, but with different methods um, that you maybe develop uh, where you have special knowledge on, I don't know, network analysis, sentiment analysis, but also you you know how to do survey studies that could you yeah, that you could use to brand yourself so that you focus on the topic but also the method and the same was true with respect to theories it could also be that you approach your um, your topic with respect to different theories it could be that you use structuration theory it could be that you use um, uh, um, uh, communicative action theory or uh, system theory or whatsoever um, so that you not only focus on one topic with the same method and the same theory all the time, but maybe change one little variable, the method, the, the, the theory, and so on. And that could also be further elaborated then. And that is also important. For example, in the research committees, we also, um, in the application committees, we also ask um, the candidates uh, for what research field are you specifically um, trained so are you more quantitative are you more qualitative uh, researcher and what is your approach with respect to social science theory that is in our uh, application um, uh, teams in the in the application committee always a question uh, which theories um, do you stand for are you uh, more like a meta theory uh, a macro theory uh, approach uh, on the so social system theory or more on the meso level like system like um, Gibbons uh, structuration theory or are you more on the micro level uh, that is also discussed in the in the committees and also important to think about I think. do we have more questions we have some more minutes so maybe one or two last questions what you're interested in. Okay, so if we don't have more questions, I think um, that was a good discussion. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you, Ansgar, and thank you, Sabine, for bringing in your views. That was uh, very highly appreciated. Really, really interesting insight. We discussed from several perspectives. And uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed our session. Thank you very much and um, have a good afternoon. Thank you. See you soon, hopefully at Eupera conferences to do networks. <laughs>